What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another Clifton Cameras video. Today we've got a brand new mirrorless from Canon. It is the EOS M50 and I can't tell you how excited I am to actually get hands on with this camera. Ever since we saw the specs um, and the features on it, I've been deliberating whether or not maybe I want to purchase this, uh, purchase this camera for myself. But up until now, all I've had is, is just numbers to sort of analyze and, and features to sort of gawk at through the internet. Now we had our first tactile experience with this camera at TPS last week. Today is my first hands-on and uh, we've, got the, we've got the model here. So now we've got it to play with. So hopefully this can help me make a more informed decision about whether or not I want to spend my hard-earned pennies on this camera. Uh, the reason that I'm looking at this camera is because, as you all know, I do social media and content creation type of work, uh, and it is, well, it, based on what we've seen, it's supposedly supposed to be a good camera for vloggers, content creators, and people who want to get into photography. So it's a good entry-level model. We want to try and refrain from just regurgitating specs and features at you, but that being said, what I'm going to do now is regurgitate some specs and features at you. Uh, the camera has a 24.1 megapixel CMOS sensor. It'll shoot 10 frames per second. It's got a Digic 8 processor. It's got Wi-Fi and NFC connectivity. It shoots 4K UHD. It's got Bluetooth and uh, Canon's coveted dual pixel CMOS AF. Um, and what else? Oh yeah, optical image stabilization. But it's not in body, it's with the lenses. I wanna talk about the external of the camera. It has a noticeably budget feel to it. it uh, it's got a, you know, a full sort of plastic body, which most cameras do, um, but it's just a bit more plasticky than it usually is. Um, you can tell that it's an entry-level camera because it has this pull-up flash. It's not a pop-up flash. The buttons are noticeably plastic and, and, and budget-like, and the grip, actually the grip is my favorite part uh, of the external of the camera. It's actually quite tactile and rubberized, so it gives you, you know, gives you something good to, to hold on to. It feels quite nice in the hand. I've got a huge hand, but the ergonomics are actually pretty good. That rubberized sort of feeling as well uh, extends to the, the back of the fold-out screen. It's actually pretty minimalist. Um, there's not a whole lot going on, and I think that's because you've got this massive 3.2 inch LCD on the back. Uh, and using the LCD thus far has been a pleasure. The touchscreen is very good. Um, what will also tell you that this is an entry-level photographer's camera slash videographer's camera is the menu, which I'll have Ben show you in a minute. But it's this nice bright white menu and it sort of, it leads you through it. It tells you what the functions are and they provide you with sort of insights as to what each option does and what the desired, well, based on your desired results, it'll guide you to the right option for you. The other thing I wanted to mention about the camera, actually, as far as we go before we get into, you know, internal stuff, is the battery is the LPE12 battery, which is the same battery for the M5 and the M6. You can get about uh, 230 stills out of it in an hour and a half video. So we came to Gloucester Cathedral because, uh, well, we got bored of the keys. We've been down to the keys a couple of times and uh, we always think it's going to be a good idea and a good place to test gear, but it's not. It always turns out to not be. So we thought we'd give a, we thought we'd give the cathedral a stab. I'm just testing out the uh, touch and drag autofocus on the uh, on the camera. It's a nice feature. I quite like it, and it's actually very uh, very accurate. The touch screens on Canons are always very, very good. One of the major things that got people excited about this camera was the fact that it was Canon's first mirrorless with 4K. One of the major disappointments with this camera was the fact that the 4K, you can't use dual pixel autofocus in 4K. Um, you can only use contrast detect autofocus. Now that might provide 
a bit of a challenge if you're in a low light situation or a situation with very harsh light. Uh, but what I aim to do now is to demonstrate the difference between the dual pixel AF that you have on 1080p, which is what we're shooting in right now. So you can see the focus of the camera tracks my movement on my face and it's very good. So you get 99 AF points um, that the camera is capable of using to determine uh, good focus. The other major disappointment with, uh, with the 4K feature on the camera is not only the fact that it shoots in con with, you know, with contrast detect autofocus, but uh, the other major caveat was the fact that when you switch over to 4K shooting, you get this massive 2.4 times crop factor. So right now we're at 1.6 times as far as the crop factor goes. Using the kit lens, if you're at your widest focal length, which is 15, where we've got a 15 to 45 mil lens on here, you've got to multiply that 15 by 1.6. And what that is, is that gives you your true 35 millimeter sort of field of view equivalent. So what we're actually at right now with the 1.6 times crop factor, at 15 mil focal length is actually about 24 mils. Now with that 4K crop factor, it's gonna give you a, well, the reason you get an extra crop factor with the 4K is the fact that the camera stops using the whole sensor and what it does is it uses only the eight megapixels in the center of the sensor. So it gives you that additional crop. So it takes it from 1.6 times to 2.4 times, which with the kit lens that comes in the kit, well, with the kit lens that comes with the camera, if you if you choose that option, at 15 mil, what you're actually shooting at is an, is something like 35 or 36 mil. Um, so you're going to need a very wide angle lens to be able to to shoot vlogs comfortably. So to demonstrate the difference in the crop factor between 1080p and shooting in 4K, I'm going to switch over to shooting in 4K right now. So I'm standing in exactly the same position I was standing in a moment ago. I leaned forward, I changed from 1080p to 4K, and you can see that it's actually cropped in a lot, um, considerably, you know. Uh, this is now the frame that I have to work with, and I'm stood more than arm's length away from the camera. So you can see this is my hand, right? So are you going to be using 4K for vlogging? Probably not, but I've got my camera on a Joby. I found a good place to put it um, in, you know, in front, of a, in front of the cathedral. It's not necessary to, you know, to shoot at arm's length all the time, but you know, as a vlogger, you're probably going to have your camera on some type, of a, some type of a handle or a Joby or something like that. So the likelihood that you're going to be shooting in 4K is probably minimal. Does the 4K crop factor make this camera completely unusable? I don't think so. Uh, I think, you know, I don't know. I, do, I just don't, I don't think it does. I think you probably have to settle with the fact that this is going to be a 1080p vlogging camera, but you can still use the 4K. Uh, in terms of the contrast detect autofocus, that's what it's using right now to determine focus as I move around within the frame of the camera. Um, and lighting is actually pretty good. And it looks like with the eye autofocus, it looks to be... It looks to be keeping focus really well, actually. But like I said, uh, contrast detect autofocus is probably gonna struggle in harsh lighting conditions and in low lighting conditions. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So we got some, uh, we got some proper glass on this thing now. Uh, this is uh, 16 to 35 uh, USM2 lens, some Canon owl glass. You always know it's owl glass because it's got the cool red ring around it. Uh, looks good with my Joby as well. Um, yeah, this, uh, this camera gained like twice its weight um, with, with this massive lens on it. But it's got the adapter on it. So this is an M2EF adapter. Uh, I think we stock it for 135 pounds. If you bundle it with the camera, I think you get like five pounds off or something like that. But for Canon users that are already out there and are looking for a vlogging camera, something light that you can uh, take with you on your photo shoots, maybe start getting into videography, the uh, e or the M to EF adapter is, uh, is definitely something you're gonna want because it makes all of your owl glass suddenly compatible with your brand new vlogging companion. All right, so moving on uh, from that mistake I just made, let me just make sure that the, yes, yes, <laughs> the, yes, the mic, the mic is indeed on. So this is what vlogging would look like through, um, through your brand new EOS M50 with 16 to 35 
USM Mark II Owlglass on it. It's a very expensive and lovely lens, but this is, this is what it would look like um, if you've got Owlglass and you wanted to put that on it. I don't recommend it. My shoulder is burning right now with the, uh, <laughs> with the weight of this lens and the camera on the end of this Joby. Um, but this is what you can expect as far as what you're going to get in the frame. And I'm going to show you what the 4K looks like. So, back to contrast, detect, and 4K vlogging with the EOS M50, and this is the 16 to 35. The microphone is on, uh, everything is going smoothly. This is really, <laughs> really burning my shoulder, but this is what you can expect to get in the frame. It's probably about 35, I don't know, we're looking about 35 mil right now, focal length. Oh, oh, oh. oh. You nearly walked into a. <laughs> oh man. So, this is what happened. Ow. So that's the EOS M50. Uh, I loved shooting with it. I think it's a great camera. Uh, I, I probably need more time to sort of play around with it, but I think we've probably given you enough for you to get a good feel for it and make a more informed purchase decision, which was our end goal. I think the real thing to think about here is, is the camera fit for purpose? Absolutely. Uh, is it the best thing that you can get without spending a penny more over 600 pounds 600 pounds? 650. <laughs> 650 pounds. Yeah. Um, is it the best thing that you can get for not a penny more than 650 pounds? I believe it is. So until next time, thanks for tuning in for another Clifton Cameras video. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed the content and come and join us on Friday this week when we do another one of our weekend review videos. Um, that's about it. Till next time. Bye. You left the camera. <laughs>